When it comes to infections, we think of ourselves as being at war with the microbes in the body and, and, and the microbes that are in our environment. And we think that a lot of these microbes, which cause about 100,000 deaths a year in this country from super infections, things like MRSA, C. difficile, uh, can cause lots of problems because uh, they're aggressive pathogens that create all kinds of endotoxin that lead to a miserable death. But there's another way to look at this. The question is, is why do we get these infections? What, what is it in our body that allows us to become ill? And other people who are well, to have immune systems that work well. It goes back to the old argument that we had between Pasteur and Beauchamp a couple hundred years ago, where basically Pasteur says it's the microbe that's causing the infections and we should kill the microbe. And Beauchamp, on the other hand, said, no, it's not just the microbe, it's the environment. It's the strength of what we call the internal milieu, the internal environment of the body, and it's immune defenses because, let's face it, when we're sick, our immunity goes south. And when it goes south, then it becomes vulnerable. So the real question is, is what makes these microbes pathologically virulent and a danger to us? And basically there's two things. One is we're looking at the, the virulence of the organism. I mean, if you were injected with enough bubonic plague microbe into you, you're probably going to die, even if you've got a good immune system. But there's also the immune defenses that are, if they're strong enough, can keep us from getting those infections unless there's a massive dose which is distributed to us in some way that's usually not natural. So when these microbes overgrow because our bodies are not strong enough to keep them from growing, they are able to populate in large amounts. And when they do, what we see are, is the growth of, of the microbes immensely. Uh, they may thousands or millions or even billions of time times more microbes than would be if we had a good immune system. And that small amount of, of toxin, that endotoxin that these microbes make, could make the difference uh, of whether or not we're well or not well. When it adds up and there's a big enough volume, you'll see that there's enough endotoxin to make us sick. So the question then becomes is, can we keep our environment sterile like we try to do in the hospital? Or does that really set the stage for allowing those pathogenic microbes to have a growth advantage? Because now they can be in the environment and they can do something to change the way that, uh, that they exist. And, they, and if they're present, then they can cause infection. If there are other microbes that are competing for that turf that feeds them, then maybe they wouldn't grow so much. So it, it, it asks the question, should we be keeping things sterile or not? And of course, we don't really know the answer to that, but there are not too many people who want to be around an environment where there are any microbes at all if you're sick enough. And there are probably about 100,000 deaths, as I said earlier, from these infections, so it's not a small thing. Now, there was an article published in the May issue uh, 2013 of the Public Library of Science 1 that looked at clay as something that could be used to try and fight infections that were on the skin. You know, we have a history of using these uh, these products for about uh, 5,000 years uh, in medicine because they have a surface that's porous that can absorb onto it a lot of the toxins that are in wounds and it helps with healing. What we found is that a lot of these clay, different kinds of clays, have different kinds of metals in them. And when you have more, uh, if you have the right combination of metals, the metals could be very effective at stopping infection uh, from being able to exist. So what we're looking at here is a study that was done that looked, with different, looked at different kinds of clays and the kinds of metals that were in them that might be helpful to fight infection. And what they found was is that, like we've already known, a metal like copper is very, is very resistant to infection. If you go to drsabuto.com and put copper in the search box, up will come these articles that talk about putting copper on the lining of different surfaces in the hospital because microbes within about an hour and a half all die when they're on a surface of copper. So that would certainly be one of the metals uh, that would be of interest, and that's what this particular study said. They also studied iron and cobalt and a couple of other metals like, like, that included zinc and uh, nickel. They found that for MRSA, there were three uh, metals that were very good. It was uh, copper, and it was cobalt, 
and zinc. And if you had those inside of the clay and you put that on, uh, on an infection that, that was immersive, that it was likely to be able to take care of it. Now, most of the time, the, in fact, in this study, what they did is they did what's called in vitro studies, which means it's outside the body. And that's different from an actual infection, but that's what they studied. And it gives us hope they can do more. And in conjunction with the other study I told you about, about copper, that tells you a lot. And then they had a combination of other metals that they found were effective against pathogenic uh, E. coli. So we've got something here that is interesting that can take us a little further in our armamentarium against infections, uh, particularly hospital-acquired infections that are very dangerous. So we got to go back to the work of both Pasteur and Beauchamp and say, yes, we don't want to expose our bodies to infections if we don't have to, and we should try and keep things as as clean as we can, meaning get the MRSA and the C. diff and the other uh, the, the pathogenic E. coli and the Pseudomonas and other fungi that are uh, in the hospital. Let's try and get rid of them as much as we can. We should try to even kill them. I think that, that makes sense. But we should also be working on the immune strength of the body, and that's something in medicine we don't spend much time on. And you'd think for people who are in the hospital, particularly ICU, or have severe infections, that we should be supporting them the best we can with all kinds of things that, that involve lifestyle. So it's diet, and maybe exercise isn't the big thing in the hospital, but sleep, you know, when lowered stress, we should be, sh be sure that our patients are getting as much sleep as they can. And of course, we should be keeping them from having any kind of exposure to toxic chemicals. These things are the guts of what we should be thinking about in conjunction with what we know in the mainstream of medicine, they can fight against infection too. So like most discussions that have differing viewpoints, you have to pay attention to both and to the settings before you make a decision about one being right over the other. But one thing's for sure is this business about impregnating clay with certain kinds of toxic metals has a potential future that we might be considering for people who have wounds where you can apply clay and there's no real side effect for them.